Here's the thing. Some people have different practices. They can be Buddhists. They can be do like whatever they want. My preacher. No, do the preacher. Like, hey, hey, ma'am. No, they have a right. Uh, yeah, preacher. Read my sign. No. Read my narrative. Uh, like, you're judging me right now. You're coming up to me. You don't know who I am. You all are preaching hate. You all fight you about stupid shit. If, if you want, I could. You don't belong here. I could. I could. Take. God does not preach hate. I'm a Christian. Okay. God does not preach hate. Could I tell you? The Bible hey. does not preach hate. Could I just explain to you why we're here? No, you can't explain shit. You guys are fucking liars. You guys are assholes. You guys are rude. You have no idea you where you're at. You haven't even heard what I've said, right? I see what your fucking sign says. What it's all I need to what is this? Pride hates? Yeah. Pride hates? Yeah. Fuck you! Pride is the number one Fuck you! Sin. Pride is the one of the number one Fuck you! you work for? I don't work for You're anybody. You're a fucking piece of shit and you all go for it. Okay, hey, listen. Ma'am, ma'am, listen. You're fucking praying for Then listen to me, ma'am. Learn the truth! I Man, no. okay. Hey, hey, we need space. We need space right now. We need space right now. You're bringing a very negative image to your group. You're making more people want to. There's some people who are on the fence, and now they're going to be on my side of the fence. Thank you. What side is that? What side is that? The pagan side. The non Christian side. You're bringing people to my side. Thank you. So we actually believe that the Spirit of God convicts people. So I don't believe Everybody has a right to believe So I want you to know I haven't, I haven't even had a chance to. Tell people, people that they have to believe your way, or they're going to a certain place, and you have to be a certain race or religion. That's Nazism. Okay. Well, that's actually not true. It is true. If you're telling me you're going to heaven, and I'm not going to go to a spiritual place because of your beliefs, and Correct. I don't believe that way, that's Nazism. That's so, critical. Thank you. All right. So you, 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 both things. I'm going to challenge you on both things. Number one, Nazism is using military violence okay, to silence anybody who oppresses you. How about that? It's hypocritical. Okay. So hypocritical with me me telling you it's a sin to drink and then me have a beer that's hypocritical what we're doing is we're trying to communicate to people a truth that we believe so 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 let me at least say this can i at least say this the idea is if 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 my belief system believes that people every human being including myself this is my son this is my brother if we believe that if if you do not repent of your sins, then that means every there single no human sin. being. I just want you to know, our belief system would say, our our, our belief system would say that every single human being starts out in a condition of rebellion against God. And so our hope and prayer is to introduce people to truth. They don't know how to. If I say no sex, you only think about the counterpart of sex. The no part doesn't come into account. So we're only creating to, to turn away. Anything so just so you know, this anybody. this sign doesn't say no sex. This sign says yeah, but, that when we're trapped by pride it's still, it's, and we close our eyes to Jesus the gospel Christ. truth of Jesus. Here's the puzzle of life. Here's Jesus Christ. Here's the puzzle. You're not looking at the whole picture. You know, I, I understand about that because you guys have also used Christianity to uh, to excuse slaughtering people for being a different color. Or a different religion. So I have never, I have never once used well, Christianity no, no, to you, do that. You have not specifically the group, the Christian group itself, Manifest yeah. Destiny, the Inquisites. Yeah. Inquisition. I would tell you, Christ would never endorse Manifest Destiny. Christ would never and endorse. Christ would never, would never endorse uh, disdain, even so much as disdain for the way that a person is born. Actually, Christ would be very, very clear on our sin condition, and this is the issue. Now you, the issue what, what is what I, that the the Bible is convoluted. It has been changed a whole bunch of times. Yeah. And instead of actually going with what is right or wrong, you're going by rules and dogma upon a book that even you will admit has been changed a whole bunch. I will not admit that the book has been changed a whole bunch. Well, then you're an idiot. Forget the book. How am I an idiot? By, by, by uh, saying you will not admit you, that the book has been changed so, a whole bunch. I'm I'm the I, 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 then maybe you need to learn the history. I will just tell you, I actually, just so you know, and I only say this to you so you know that I don't come to this conclusion. Um, I don't come to this conclusion lightly. I did go to Bible college. I studied the original Greek. I studied the Bible. Actual manuscript. I, I paid so a lot. To a place that, that focuses upon brainwashing you in a certain way, and now you know everything about both sides. And so, actually, I should listen to you. Actually, I've never, I've never claimed no, that. All I'm claiming is that I, I thought. Okay, just my name's Ryan, by the way. And I'm not okay. going to touch your hand. Okay. So what I, what I would tell you, you can call me Reverend Downing. Okay. Can I call you? That's what they fucking live on. 
So saying saying that pride hates love is well is, it actually says is going to pride hates love mourns is is the actual comment. So no, actually, they can you please can you please move you? No, I'm not moving. Okay. I don't like you guys. You're, come over here and stir the kids up. We're well, not trying to stir kids up. We're just trying to warn. To. Your intentions are not the issue. The effect is the issue. Yes. If you were choking and I decide to give you uh, the CPR the instead of the Heimlich maneuver, and I say, oh, I'm just trying to help. Is that my intention to let you die? What if you were spiritually? What if you were? What if you were spiritually choking? And our desire is to come up and to help you not choke. You are. So you are spiritual. I was spiritual. Now I am free. So the Holy Spirit would say that it convicts the world of sin. Okay, I don't give a shit what you think sin. any spirit says. No, it's not what I think. I'm just no, I'm it what, it I'm is pronouncing what God says. You have adopted from a group. You've adopted that's, that's that belief, okay. and now you think that it is the truth, that it is the word of the Lord, when it is usually the word of either Emperor Constantine okay. or, no, the, or my word King is not James. the word of him. No, no, I go. King, Look at the history. Uh, I you said you went to Bible college. Yes. Then why don't you know about uh, Emperor Constantine or I know, King James I, I, I know, changing the Bible? I know what both of them did. I'm talking about that the, the message of the Bible has actually never changed. Bull. The message of the Bible. Shit. The message of the Bible has never changed. The message of the Bible has changed to not kill to yes kill. There's no, one. No. There's, there's where, 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 where does it say in the Bible to kill? Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. That's not in the Bible. That's, yes, it is. It is not in the and Bible. And how, how can you say you went to Christian college? Go ahead, look it up. Yeah, Thou tell me shalt where. not look it up. Tell me where. Tell me where it is. It's in, I don't know the exact chapter. And I also don't there. know the exact chapter where it says that if a man should live with another man, that he should be stoned to death. Uh, no, actually, all of this is Leviticus. I remember. Yeah, 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 and in Leviticus, it Leviticus. says that you should kill a woman if she's lost her virginity before marriage. Which back then is usually by rape by her own father, who in that exact same passage has to be the person to throw the first stone. And you're saying that love wins. I, I do say that love. That, and you're saying that God is love and that this is good and this is peaceful. This is Christianity. The, the, the reason, the reason, you guys that love are wins. attaching yourself to a group that has by far committed way more genocide than any other group, meme, idea, or anything throughout all of history. Okay, so, okay, I'm, I am sorry that you feel that way. My point is, is that he would have shared the message through love. And if he saw that this was creating strife, he wouldn't have pushed it down their throats. What he would have said is, hey, Come, come eat with me. Come drink with me. Let me share this with you. Okay. And that's what that's how Christ walked himself. Okay, can I give you so one? Regardless of whatever anybody okay, else said after him, him. That's your, let, can, okay, can that's I give your, you one example to challenge you? Let me, let me one example to, to challenge you. In Acts chapter six and seven, it talks about one of the first Christians. His name was Stephen. Uh huh. And he had a message that he spoke to a crowd of people. Yeah. And he, his message was. This was his name was Stephen. It's in Acts six and seven. And his message was. Historically speaking, God has consistently revealed this truth to humans, and humans have always persecuted the ones. He said the prophets. He's talking to the Jews. He said, "You Jews, you, you've, you've consist your fathers consistently killed the prophets who brought this message." And then he says, "You yourselves have killed God. You killed Jesus. You put him on the cross, right? Guilty of their sins. Their message was so hateful to them." That they plugged their ears so that I'm they... I'm still listening yeah, to you. I just got to keep they, an eye on my boy. They, yeah, please keep your eye on your boy. I got a boy too. So they were so upset at his message of you need to repent and be right with Jesus that they plugged their ears and in a rage beat him to death with stones. All right, so that's the story of the first Christian martyr. And the idea was he was just faithfully proclaiming a message. And just to tell you, the only reason why I'm out here, I'm uncomfortable here with my son, but we made the decision to come here because we actually believe that every single human being in your default position is at odds with God, dead in sin, which means you're destined to hell. I was that place too. I was in the same condition. We were all so I have been. I'm, I am no better off than you and our and than any human being. Okay, we all start dead in our sins and our trespasses, and then the message is Jesus came to reveal to us our shortcomings, our sins, and then offers us repent from your sins trust in jesus who died on the cross to pay for our sins and then walk in newness of life okay so let me tell you about a personal experience of mine okay when i was 16 and up until that point i took my life for granted i took everything that was given to me for granted i used to steal from people i loved and my own family when i was 16 i slipped i fell four stories off of a cliff head first to a rock about the size of this slab right here all right 
the moment before I hit that rock, all of time ceased. It stopped. I had enough time to look to my right and look to my left and see the particles of dust in the air. Okay. And as I look back to my right, I found myself suspended in emptiness in a great big void. No light, no dark, no up, no down, no direction whatsoever, just emptiness. And as I hung there in the emptiness, a voice came to me and it told me, you can reap what you have sown to this point, or you can spend this rebirth atoning for that life that you took for granted. And that way that you will atone is through shepherding mankind to their faith, okay? So I've spent my life since then helping people find their faith, no matter what they might want to call God, but to walk a righteous path and to do right by others, okay. all right? Now, I don't do that by yelling that in their face. Okay. I just don't, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. 2,000 years of this, which proved that. We've had wars and everything where, where countless innocents have died, countless guilty have died. Yeah. I'm not saying that what happened to Christ was right. I am saying that that happened 2,000 years ago when there was less understanding going on in the world. Okay, now we are in the 21st century. We know better than just tack this dude up because we have more sense than that. Like a child, we have grown to adolescence, okay? And we're, we're trying to find that knowledge. But that knowledge isn't gonna be reached by forcing it down each other's throats because like a defiant child, they will defy it the more you yell it at them. But if you share it with them, like I share my culture with my yeah. son, I teach him about my yeah. historical living and stuff like that, yeah. and he finds interest in it. Yeah. So if you share it in peace rather than in shouting and in preaching and in, and in forcing people to, to hear you, yeah. if you invite them to hear you rather than forcing them to hear you, okay. the message will be received in abundance. So can I ask you a question? Would you, would you call yourself a good person? Absolutely. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. I would call myself a good person because I know that I live righteously. I walk and live for a, for a picture bigger than my own. I live for a world better than I grew up in for that boy. Okay. I live to do whatever I can. And as a martial artist, I've spent my life doing my martial arts. And in all fairness, it, for whatever reason, God or the gods or whatever you would like to refer to him as, created me in such a way that for whatever reason, I feel most one with the universe when I've been in the midst of violence. That used to take me into a very dark place as a kid. I had to learn how to give that direction. And so what I did is I turned that skill, I turned those abilities into something that could help my people. And so now what I do is when I see people getting bullied on the street, or I see people's camps getting robbed, yeah. or I see some girl about to get raped, I fucking step in between and I put my skills to work and though though I don't approve of unnecessary violence, okay, yeah. I I am the wolf that will eat those monsters. Yeah. For the, for the Lord, or for God, or for the God. So can I ask you a couple like of questions that would clarify what our message is? Absolutely. Can I do that? Okay. okay. Do you mind if we come sit over here so I can just be a little bit closer okay. to my son? Could you bring, you, would you want to bring your son over? I just I want can, to make I sure I'm, I'm here with my, yeah, my buddy, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's your son's name? This is Evan. Evan? Hi, Evan. My name's Ryan. This is my son, Michael. Nice to meet you. So I'm Zacharias. Hi, Zacharias. I appreciate it. Okay. That's so, an excellent name. So, Zacharias, here's, here's, a, here's the, the framework that we go. So, we, we're just going to stick with what we see revealed in the Bible. So, God says, let's take the conversation out of the world and into standing before him in his court. So, he'll use the Ten Commandments as a law that law to reveal the condition of our heart and so one of his questions would be have you ever told a lie have i ever told a lie yeah ever in your life absolutely yeah so so a lie so by the way yeah. yeah so what would you call people who tell a lie well i would call them naive okay so but if i was running around lying all the time you would call me a a liar is that, no, is that fair my, to say it's not my place to judge okay it's not your place to, if someone tells a lie you can't say you're lying I could say they're lying, or what I could do is understand that I know that they're lying, okay. and rather than make that judgment myself on yeah. them, then I could live my life in accordingly and acclimate and adapt. But maybe then, but you'll admit for yourself then that you've, you've lied before. Absolutely. So, so therefore, if, the, if, if you were guilty of lying, you'd say, I'm guilty. Yeah. Right? So me too. All right, God says, 
Um, have you ever stolen anything ever in your life? Anything that didn't belong to Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Okay, what do you call people who steal? A thief. A thief. So therefore, um, lying, stealing. Have you ever been angry at someone in your heart? Ever in your life been angry at someone in your heart? So Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, do not commit murder. But I tell you, whoever has anger in their heart towards another brother, any human on this earth, is guilty of murder. Because God pierces through the soul, sees the condition of our heart. So you said you've been angry, so that'd make you guilty of? I, I, I see In God's what you're court, you see the idea? Yeah. Okay, so, I'm so not the, saying that I'm innocent. I know. So the last. That's, that's even more so why I have the perspective that I do. So, th so this is the beautiful moment, just to finish the message. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just to kind of clarify one more time, God said that anybody would have lust in their heart would be guilty of adultery because he pierces it, sees the condition. So, if God, so just to play the yeah. if, if God was to judge you based upon these commandments, would you be found innocent or guilty? You've already told me. Yeah, guilty. guilty. Okay. If that, if that was the criteria to go to heaven or hell, where would you go at that point in time? If that was the criteria. Well, considering that I accept his existence and everything, I suppose I'd be forgiven and I'd go to heaven. So that, so at that, so at that moment though, he says, if you're found guilty, Revelation 21, eight says liars will burn in the lake of fire. There's multiple passages that talk about, um, no, uh, no liar, no thief. Um, we'll, we'll make it in the kingdom of heaven. If God had to judge you by the Ten Commandments, if he's a good judge that can't be bribed, that can't be swayed, if he's a good judge at that moment, would, he, would, would your sentence be heaven or hell if he used the law? I suppose in the in with the context in which you're you're presenting yeah, I'm it, I'm just trying and, to create because yeah, there's more to say just, at the I'm, end of this. I'm just saying, uh, it, yes, uh, in the context in which you're you're portraying it, yeah, I would be found guilty and I'd go to hell. Okay, so so just to stick then with the revealed word of God, I think you've told me. Uh, does that idea concern you a little bit? If that was true, would that concept? If that was true, it would concern me. Personally, I'm a I'm a heathen, bro. I I pray to multiple gods. I'm a pagan, okay. and. I don't deny Christ or his existence. I do believe he was the son of God. Do I believe that he was the only God? No, he even admits that he is not the only. He is just the first. He is just the first of his kind. When, uh, so I, I'm actually, I'm not I'm not sure I know a verse where Jesus admits that. So he, he says he's the first and the last. So he, uh, God in, in the Old Testament, I don't remember the exact okay, verse. Because, okay. So he, he says that, you know, he is the first of, of his counsel. Don't pray to any God, to any other God but him or before him or whatnot. Yeah. So the fact is, is that he he acknowledges there that there that there are other gods, other beings of his nature. So if I could now, just tell did, you. He also declares that he's the first of them and that they are of him. And so his counsel is, is you know, in essence, I mean, I guess it could be broken down in a couple different perspectives. One perspective could say that he made multiples of himself to give himself perspective on himself okay. and have an outside opinion and therefore be honest to himself. On the other hand, you know, perhaps he is one of many gods. Personally, my personal belief, I believe that, that all monotheistic beliefs are actually was Loki coming to Midgard okay. and... Yeah. and okay. Spread and spreading dissent and and uh, strife amongst mankind, creating a way and a wheel that would turn upon mankind and cause and cause eternal strife and warfare and distract and distract us from what is our true way in nature and what is our true path so, to our. So what I would like say our, on this the issue, to our creation. if I could jump in, what I would say on this issue is well, that we're going to use the Bible as our source of authority and so, truth, and so, the Bible would be incredibly clear from start to finish that there is one I appreciate and only God. That, that 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 is what you do, but I believe a different way. So what's your source of authority then? What's your source of authority? My source of authority. How do you know what's be, right oh, and wrong? But how, how does how do Odin know, reveal to how you? Do, how do I know what's right and wrong? Yeah. I, I feel it in my heart. I hear it in my prayers. They come to me in my dreams, bro. I'm, does your I'm, heart ever deceive me and the you? Gods are very does close. your heart ever deceive you? Because the not Bible would say the heart is deceitful above all else. Not since I've surrendered. It's never deceived you once. Not since I've surrendered. Okay, so you're going to say that you and your heart are going to be the judge of what's right and wrong? No. So then what's what's the judge of the what's right and the wrong? The judge of what's right and wrong is all father and the creator yeah, yeah but how does he communicate his what's right and wrong to you how does jesus and god you know communicate with you through the bible through the bible is one very, very clear way you don't you don't ever feel his presence in your prayers so of course i do but it's okay, only reinfor okay. it's only reinforces what's revealed okay. in the word of god because so, we could the so bible I, says very clearly that that satan is a deceptive spirit and he absolutely. can come in and lead men astray so absolutely. that's why he gives us his revealed word of god and the spirit works to confirm what the word of god says i'm just saying a man who presents himself and becomes king and allows himself to be king or whatnot 
and that is his that's his role. I'm king. That's that's not the way. So actually, and Jesus so didn't come on the scene and declare that everybody worship it. He came on the scene, and the Bible clearly states that he had the right because he was God. He had the right to declare every single human bow down before me. But he set that right aside so that he could serve humanity. So he could give us an image of what it looks like. The greatest act of love is sacrifice. Because Jesus says, I did not come into this world is to condemn you. To be, he came to, into this world from an outside perspective, to give listen, us freedom from the condemnation. Yeah. Let's look at this non-biasly. If, if Jesus and all of that happened yes. today, yes. we would call it suicide by cop. To be frank. No that, way. We yeah, would not. Absolutely. No way. Absolutely. He, he surrendered. Listen. He, he, he was in the garden. I just got to jump in. He was in the garden. Just uh -huh. so you know the story. He was in the garden I, I praying. The and then the guards came and arrested him. And all along the way, he never once incited violence. He, he told us, Peter came to chop off a guy's ear. He's like, no, he put the ear back on. We're not inciting violence. I'm coming to sack. He's all along the way. He's on trial. He does not throw stones. He does not accuse. He just keeps saying, I came. I am. The one, the Son of Man is coming. I am the one that you've been waiting for. I'm okay, the Messiah. That's my and point. then they sacrifice so that's, him. So that's my point, is by saying that, at the time in which he said that, yeah. okay, would be the same as me, as, as like me declaring myself president. And all I said, the only difference is though, the, the, the Bible lays out a path that they were waiting for their Messiah. The entire Old Testament, for all of its details, is a type it's it's a schoolmaster it leads us to the fact that humanity needed somebody to come meet their oh sorry to come meet the righteous requirements of the law that's the deal there are righteous you use the word righteousness the whole old testament paints a picture that humanity can't do this right they fail they fail they fail they had this sacrificial system where they kill him bulls and goats but hebrew says that it never once satisfied god's righteous requirements it was waiting for the spotless lamb to be sacrificed for the sins of humanity so jesus fills in this story they should have recognized him and they didn't and it's clear because then because the gospel had to go out to the whole world not just for the jewish people. so let's just say this if i was the son of let's hypothetically say if i was the son of god would i not be considered an arrogant shit for going around and telling people I'm the son of God. So I'm, that's I'm, it. That's in essence whether whether pass, whether passive aggressively or or just directly yeah. insinuating. Yeah. Okay. So this is a stream that's hard to go it's, down because I would say it's blasphemy for anybody else who isn't God to claim to be the son of God. Absolutely. And that's so, why this is a hypothetical. So if, I'm just saying, if he walked up and actually and actually was Jesus himself. Yeah. Okay. He knows he's the son of God. I would say that it can and, be because Jesus he, said when he comes back, he's going to come back with fire and he's going to baptize the world in judgment. You so that there's no way. It's starting to rain. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. All the way back. No. I read my history books. Yes. The Crusades. What? The Crusades. Yes. When Christians went to Jerusalem to retake the Holy Land, okay. who did they go to retake the Holy Land for? Who did they go to do? For the Pope? But the Holy Land belongs to the Jews, it says so in the Bible itself. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to defend what historically has been done. Their Holy Land. Now also in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the Holy Bible, yeah. it says that Ishmael is also a son of Abraham. Correct. Or Isaac or... Abraham, you're right. And then you're right. Jacob or whoever. Yeah. So, so to debate some of these historical things, we, we can do that, but that gets off track of the, the, the reason we're here is because of the condition of man's soul, and that man's soul stands before God in a condition that needs to be saved. So I'm not Catholic, I'm not Catholic, I don't recognize the authority of the Pope. It did not originate, all of Christianity originated from Christ. We're doing it for some accountability, we, just we, for we, safety we, out here. It's, okay. it's, no, it's not against the law, it's, so it's recording. I'll, I'll, I won't have it on your face, but we'll we want to be able to record right the, now, the conversation. But, no, it's, it's for accountability, yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Have a lot of anger. 
Because when we first, did you see the, the violence that was being yeah. threatened towards us when we first got here? It just is really helpful because we'd rather have this kind of, come, the one, see I'll turn away from you in respect, um, just want to have this kind of conversation with people and that's what we're advising. Yeah. Can I give you something to look at and read? It's a great comic, it's what my son's handing out. I've got an entire stack of them. Okay. So fighting Illini, those colors are similar. Yeah. Yeah. No bears. Opening people's minds. All right. So this is kind of my point that I was making earlier. This is going entirely more peaceful when you just share the word like this. Yeah. Rather than spouting it over a speaker, man. Yeah. You know, it avoids it avoids all conflict. People don't feel like they're being forced onto something. You know. Yeah. Um, I like like I said earlier. I don't share your faith. I have yeah. I have my own. Yeah. But in the end, I mean, a lot of our messages are still the same. Oh, Father Roden, I don't know if you know this, but he was also crucified and hung from the world tree for nine days. And that's where, that's where the knowledge of the runes... So, so what's interesting, the, 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 the idea of the Odin and, and Loki and all of that, the, um, the, the Bible would actually speak to that kind of issue and it said that there is, there is a truth and then what happens is, I would, I would say it would be the spirit of the devil, would be that spirit of Loki that comes and, and, and just barely tweaks the true story enough that it sounds believable but spreads a deception so how much do you know about the old sagas which ones would you be speaking of particularly are you talking about particularly like uh, Ragnarok Ragnarok and stuff like that do you, know, do you know the saga of Ragnarok I know I know some of them I'm not going to claim to be an expert of it but I know so, some of them so Baldur Baldur was the son was the son of Odin yeah the shining he was called the shining one he was yeah. always shining he was yeah. very benevolent very Christ-like actually he's actually compared to Christ a great deal by Christians afterwards and it's he's part of how they how they convinced uh, pagans that were willing to conform rather than by wrath but through, through their own will okay. to, to conform because in the end in Ragnarok okay so so Baldur Baldur is killed, okay, and it's dev all the gods weep for him. You know, he was the he was the son he was the son of Odin, and the shining one he goes to Helheim, and hell for us is a bit different than your guys' hell. It's not it's not all, it's just another place of the afterlife. There's many different realms in which you can you can wind up. Um, Hiffle hell would be the equivalent of what you guys call hell. Well, um, as, as long as that's a place of complete and utter darkness. Uh, lake of fire, sulfur, weeping of gnashing and teeth for eternity, alone, the, the, the dark, only is, would be, apart from the will of the, 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 only the, the love of God. So, in Hippel Hell, it's we're all the genuine. Yep, it's where all the the genuinely the the evil and and uh, those those dark souls go. You know what I mean? And, so to uh, piggyback so, on that idea, though, just to because I, I I feel I, like you keep thinking that we're the same well, in this, and I, we're I not. Just, I just wish you wouldn't interrupt me. I guess is is more my okay. my conflict I right now. I actually think that you've talked more than I've talked in this conversation. Perhaps. So I've been real, I've been really trying to listen. Absolutely. But I think um, you're summarizing our view not accurately. So because we're not saying the same thing, I just want to make sure that you so, understand that. So Boulder, okay who is like very benevolent and he's actually at the end of Ragnarok it is Boldar and Hod that come and rebuild Asgard in the heavens okay. and uh, and then help one man and one woman who emerge from the base of Yggdrasil after Ragnarok they were they were stashed there to survive and they did and as the first you know the first man and the first woman of the new age okay. they come in to repopulate Midgard this great garden pretty much which had been overgrown everything is grown back after Ragnarok and when they come back they repopulate the world and then later aid you know Boulder and Hod and this the children of the other gods uh, rebuild the heavens and, and the nine worlds so Boulder though like I said he's a very Christ-like uh, figure and I actually really encourage you to check this saga out for yourself. Okay, I will I'll look into um, more detail so Loki Loki was the deceiver and he after after tricking Hod into killing Boulder Odin kills Hod they both go to Helheim whatever but they're promised to return during Ragnarok the shining one rises from Helheim this benevolent god he comes from the underworld and makes his way back to the heavens okay and ascends much like Christ after fall after death rose again okay Boulder will rise again the difference is, is that 
if God, if Jesus, if the stories were correct, then Boldar would be more looked on, or comes in more of the form that people would expect, or as the Bible would describe, the Antichrist is supposed to return. In which case, Loki, who also calls himself king, allows himself to be called king, and takes and takes pride in that, and is the trickster who will present these things in in passive aggressive manners and in convincing ways, so deception amongst mankind, and so. Truly, he comes to mankind claiming to be the savior and that he is there and that he is there to save them from the storm when really he was the bringer thereof. Okay. Yeah. And and what Christianity would view as the Antichrist rises to be Boulder, who was actually the benevolent one, which means that mankind was deceived from the get. And it isn't until after the, the twilight of the gods that we are able to, after the death of Loki that we were able to actually find the, the roots of his deception and and see it for ourselves and and come to terms with it. So, I mean, so is there's it, a great deal of similarities. But is, is, it, is, is it possible like a, that that saga, though, just in impossible? Is it possible that saga is a slightly twisted view of the true declaration of, of God in Christ and the story of redemption that's proclaimed in the Bible? Is it possible that they could, could be, be piggybacking? Came, on the foundational except truth. Except it came around 2,000 years beforehand. Yeah. Well, except God would be eternal. So I, I think it's very yes. possible. And, and actually, Satan knew very much of the story of the Messiah. He knew the promises. He knew from the moment that um, Adam and Eve and the deception and the judgment in Genesis 3, he knew that there would be a, eventually a son of Adam, a, a Christ, a perfect Christ to come and smash his head uh, and, and break it. And that, that, was a, that was foretelling of the beauty of the cross. Before the foundations of the earth, Christ was crucified for our sins. And so... What I appreciate about you, Zechariah, right? Zechariah. Zechariah. Okay, sorry, Zechariah. What I appreciate is that you actually think about this stuff in more detail than a lot of people do. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I've seen. And so, because you've seen, but there's, I think that when you hear all the stories of deception that you talk about, I think it's, it, is it possible though that some of these revelations come from people who are trying to trying to deceive you themselves? Because if, if we base it, could, it all it upon be, perception, that would be kind of hard considering that you know the the studies that I do, I don't just take it for hearsay. No, I go yeah, and I take multiple sources. I'm an educated yeah. and smart human being, yeah. so yeah. I don't I just tell. go off of what somebody tells me. I yeah. go off of what I feel is right. But where would be the source that communicates this Cro truth to Cross, you, though? Yes. Cross evaluated with. What I've been told, okay. I take the rel you know, the relative facts, yeah. and you know, and just it's a it's a yeah. work of deduction, you know. What yeah. what I know, you know, when you hear truth, you know when you hear truth. Not always though. Sometimes the Bible says that sometimes our conscience deceives well, us when we hear truth. Our conscience. I, I guess I'm one of those rejected. lucky people. I have I've got a knack for when I know when somebody is pretty much telling me the truth, and I know when a human being is fucking lying to me. Okay. So I've okay. I've been around. So I've been part of uh, fighting. As long as I have, like, uh, so I fight and compete about five to six different nationally spread and internationally spread medieval combat societies. Okay, yeah. I get on battlefields where there's literally, like, last year I was on a battlefield day one, there was 3,000 of us out there. A thousand people a team. And we're hunting each other over a densely wooded bluff. When you're fighting that many people, I have to be able to read my opponents that fast. Yep. Because here's one, here's another, here's another. And through 30 years of doing it, yeah. I've, I've learned how to read people very well. I've learned how to read when they're trying to deceive me, when they're trying to lead me into something or draw me into the spider's web. And I've learned when that when they're about to move truly, you know? And I've learned how to read those deceptions. And those subtle characteristics carry on throughout any language because because it's really the because it's it's in it's in. I, I want to kind of jump over and talk to this man real quick. Can I leave this with you? That clarifies our position a little bit more. If you read and study, compare it with your your studies. Because I, I will go away. I will go away and I will read more about um, some of the Norse mythology check, and those check, stories. Check I promise the, that I will. The saga of Ragnarok. Okay. Okay. I will and, absolutely. And, uh, I think I think you'll find it very interesting at nothing else. Okay. And I don't expect you to agree with my beliefs. Okay. Just as I would hope that you wouldn't expect me to believe. I do yours. not expect. I do know that but, you have a will in your own relationship with God, but, but I do encourage you towards this concept that true absolutely. repentance before God and would be my. I belief. believe that that our manner and our conduct and how we carry ourselves, okay. regardless of who we call God or the gods or whatnot, regardless of our difference in faith, okay. the fact 
that we we both walk in our faith in that same light, in that same manner, yeah. and believe in passing on the message and sharing it with other people and teaching people how to walk in a righteous way. Okay. All right. I think I know. I think I know that you know what I'm talking about when I say that. I understand what you're saying. I do. But uh, I please uh, check that out when you when it's just you, and I will I will check out more of your. Uh, that's I promise. Thank you very okay. much. And I really appreciate everything yeah. toning yeah. down and everything. Thank you. Okay. Me no too. Problem. God intended a man and a woman together, not a man and a man. In the beginning, God created man and woman. He didn't create man and man. So, but did you say you went to church? I think I heard you mention church. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you currently? I still go to church. Okay. So you said that your, your, Sunday, your church doesn't talk about sin then, out of curiosity? No, Does it talk it about man's about position? Sin, it doesn't talk about hating me. Okay, so neither do we, by the way. There, there, there's not, we have never said anything. In fact, if we hated gays, it'd be like hating, uh, it'd be like hating a glutton, hating a liar, and it's not, that's not Christ, so we wouldn't be Christians. There's zero hate in what we're doing here. It's absolute zero hate. Well, if someone's gay, they're gay. They're not not gonna be gay. So do you think you're born gay? Uh, you think a person would be born gay? Yeah. Yeah? Why do you say that? I know, like, I have a nephew that's five, a little fucking black kid that's gay. Okay. So do you, do you, do you know what fornication is? Fornication is running around and having sex with people because you want to. You think people are born as fornicators? You think you're born and that means that you are destined to run around and have sex with everybody you meet? No. Okay. Do you think people, are people born thieves? Yeah. You're born... And from the moment you're born, you're destined to be a thief forever? Yeah, so a little something called destiny, like how your life is planned to go. So you believe in destiny then? So who's in charge of destiny? Who's in charge of this destiny? Like if you believe in destiny, that means you believe in, a, in some kind of supreme overarching authority, right? Right? Yeah, God. Yeah, so God. So does that mean you read the Bible? The You've read the entire Bible? So have you read what the Bible says about sin? I know. So do you know what the, what does the Bible say about sin and our heart condition? That you have to repent for your sins. Yes, exactly. What's repentance? Do you know what it is? So it'll be a little bit more than that. Can I ask you, would you consider yourself a good person? Fuck no. No? Why? No, but I'm still going to go to heaven. Why? So have you ever lied? Everyone's yeah. Do you lie a lot? Have you lied a lot in your life? If you counted up all the lies, would it be like one or two or more than that? Yeah, all the lies in your life. No, like this, to, for me, yeah. it's wrong. But in the Bible, Jesus could turn water into wine. It's kind of like okay. this, it's kind of like the same thing. So you, you, the new age and old age is the exact So same Jesus thing. would say, you've heard that it was said in the Ten Commandments that you shall not commit adultery, but anybody who's ever lusted in their heart for somebody else is guilty of adultery. Have you ever lusted in your heart for somebody else? Have you ever showed another human being lust? Have you ever lusted after another human being in your life? Yeah. Okay. Have you, so you've told me that you've lied. Have you ever stolen anything in your life ever, regardless of value? Have you ever taken anything that wasn't yours? Yeah. Okay. So right now, just so you know, you've admitted to lying. You've admitted to, um, Adultery, you've admitted to stealing. Are you saying you've never lied in your life? I've never once said that. That'd be hypocritical. I've lied. All right. So have you? Well, yeah, of course. Okay. Have does. you ever been angry in your heart against somebody else? Yeah, of course. We're okay. We're we are human. Part of what yeah. Makes us that. So you know. Learn from those mistakes and we move on. I don't believe that we need to put that towards any kind Well, you actually know what Jesus says? Right. Jesus comes on the scene. And Jesus comes on the scene and says that I don't come on earth to condemn you because you already stand condemned because every human being, every human being sins for all have sinned. We've all lied. We've all hated. We've all lusted. We've all stolen. We're all guilty of yeah, all. The ones of us who are sane and fucking understand like, you know, how human beings can feel and how we should fucking act. Yeah. Fucking learn from our mistakes. Don't do that shit anymore. Just don't do certain things in general. But what, but, but what if God com comes on the scene and says you know, that... a lot of fucking creatures and shit who have been busted fucking with little boys and shit like that. A lot of them. Okay, shit, I would right? never you know, defend that. I would never defend that. I know, it's just fucked up. You know, that's kind okay. of off-putting thing, the whole religion. How many people who are running religions like that do fucked up shit?
and yeah. whatnot. And I know priests who fucking buy cocaine, who fucking do drugs, I, who do shit like that, you know? I would never, I, I would never defend or encourage Christian that. Who go and party and shit still. They just fucking maintain those sins. Is it a sin to do drugs or alcohol or anything like that? Is it really a fucking sin to lie if it's for the better of someone's good? Like saying like, oh, you know, you're gonna go to a better place when you die. It's gonna be okay. Just to make them feel better before they die? Is that a So the Bible would say that if you're guilty of any law breaking, if you've broken any of God's law, I believe that means you're, you're unfit. In your head, you're not fit. I believe that what you feel is right in the end, whether people see it that way or not, I believe that we still go to that higher place. Okay. So how do you know, though? How do you know we that? We don't know, and you don't know. None I do. of us know. Well, I do know. In that book, you don't know if that's real. It was rewritten five fucking times by King James. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't read... That's e history, everybody. Those are factual. You can look that so up. have you read the Greek before the King James? Then I just Nobody want to make sure has. you're talking. That's the thing. Nobody. But that's has. not true. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. It all got rewritten from Latin to English it, by someone who it, could have changed the it, whole it, fucking thing. It, it does exist. No, it does you exist. think about that. It could have been re the person who rewrote the fucking Bible yeah. could have put wherever the fuck he wanted it when he yeah. translated it from ancient Latin. So to do Latin you believe in God? Latin. I believe there's a higher power. I don't believe it's God. I believe we all are the collective consciousness that is creating. But how would you know that? Itself. How would you know that? Do you, I don't, do you believe in absolute truth? I feel truth? that closer to my heart than I do about some. But the Bible, the but the Bible would say and that the heart. Me being real. The Bible would say that the heart is deceitful above all else. So your heart could be deceiving you in this. Isn't it possible? Hey, what time is it like right now? Is it one thirty? Uh, it's one eighteen. It's one eighteen. Right, I gotta play guitar at eight. We got two more minutes. Okay. All right. So real quick then, the idea is because God is a holy God, as revealed in His Bible, because God's a holy God. Humanity by itself is not able to enter into his presence. So at the end, when he judges, 150,000 people die every day. That's two people a second. When you do, it's appointed that you will stand before God. How many people are born today? I don't know how many people are born today. A lot more than two people okay. dying every second. Yeah, but, people are born but when you're born, but when you when you're born, you don't instantaneously stand before God in judgment. When you die, you do. And at that moment, God's going to judge you based upon His law, and says, "Have you been able to keep the righteous requirements of My law?" The Bible clearly states that all humanity is guilty in that moment in time. That's how we start out. We start out in defiance of it, in need of someone to pay our bill. We stand in court, and if it's up to me that pays the price for my sins, for all the things that we've talked about, the judgment is death and hell. That's why we're here, because we love people, because that, that was my condition, that was my son's condition, that's all of our condition in that moment in time. So now though, now that we've heard the message that Jesus says, he comes so to earth and goes- Somehow by coming down here and fucking with people who are homosexual, making people think that somehow loving another human being is fucking wrong in some So let's, let's way. say there was a cliff and someone was walking towards the cliff. Would you warn that person before they fell off the cliff? Or would you just sit back and watch it? If I'm sitting there and there's a cliff where they're going to die and I'm in a chair, would I? Would you watch? Because they're sad, that's different. If they're doing it because they're happy, happily, walking, yeah, happily walking, happily walking off then he the rose cliff from the grave. Reincarnation, dog. What about Literally, it? There's reincarnation in the Bible. That is not reincarnation. reincarnation. That is not reincarnation. reincarnation. Reincarnation means you come, you come back as another person or another body. That's the same body resurrected. That's the same. Person. Jesus Christ in heaven right now has yeah, holes in his hands memory? and holes in his feet. It is his body brought back. His spirit proclaimed victory in hell. You know, came they back. say that he came back. They didn't say exactly how he came back. They didn't yeah, say it does. No, it didn't say he came back as Jesus. Yes, it does. No, no. It Thomas. He, he said, "He said, Thomas, touch, touch the wounds in my hand. I'm, I'm the one who died on the cross for your sins. Because there's a price. If you have to pay that price when you stand before God, just have that rewritten. The fucking I don't, I don't sound like that. That that's the thing is, we don't know any of this. So if you know that much, then you know that King James wrote one, and then I mean, King James brought together the King James Bible. But then there's Bible translations that use different manuscripts. So you keep, you keep talking like you really understand this, and I'm challenging you. There's a truth. I have a lot of pride." Because I love a lot of people. It warns me to love more so that I can survive. Honestly, the thing I, I think like about the, the rainbows, Bible is the yo. way that King James came you know, up. You know, you know, like what time it says. So you, you keep getting pride. hung up on you keep getting hung up on the King James thing. Not about pride thing is just kind of bullshit. A way to keep no, down the masses. Well, the number one sin has to do with pride and has to do with humans. It's the first and second commandment. It's taking God out of heaven and putting ourselves in His place. It's one of the reasons I'm able to feel comfortable coming up and saying shit. Well, see, so that kind of boldness, it's really encouraging. Imagine what would happen, though, if you were able to repent of those sins, walk in the newness of life that Christ would come. That's what I would pray for you, okay? Continue to think about this stuff.
So I always like to be clear that the number one reason why we're standing here today is because we truly believe that we were sick in our sins. We were sick and dying in our sins. And then God showed up and gave us the remedy of our sins and invites us to repent of our sins, to admit our guilt before Him and find newness of life. Love would push us and urge us to come before you all. So I do appreciate uh, the, actually it's been very welcoming. And I, I just want anybody who's listening right now that's around, I just want to tell you that I'm thankful for that. Because I do believe that God appoints a time and a place. He says, today is the day of salvation. You can repent of your sins today and enter in to peace. I'm actually starting to enjoy myself. <laughs>